Montana this morning. Montana residents will be voting on marijuana initiatives once again in November. Coming up, what those initiatives are all about and how they got on the ballot. The Fish and Wildlife Commission meets to review petitions about how to manage recreation on the Madison River. I'm Gabby Crevett and I'll have that story coming up. Just ahead of 630 back here on your Friday, Montana this morning, Caitlin Corbett and Matt Elwell. It's going to be beautiful out there, but we want to enjoy it because it's going to get hot. Today. Yeah, just like anything, it never lasts. Never. No, but um, it'll be nice it'll and be nice uh, we are looking at a fairly dry setup for the next handful of days this morning. Chilly, 34 degrees this morning in West Yellowstone, 37 in Butte. It is chilly to start the day. Clear skies, quiet conditions initially. It looks like our daytime temperature should be into the low 80s for most of the area, upper 70s as you get into the mining city. But we have some warm days ahead, including the potential of some record-breaking heat. We'll break that all down for you, talk about that coming up in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Matt. The Bear Creek fire burning west of Dillon near Lemai Pass is estimated at more than 4,000 acres this morning. As of yesterday, 192 people are working to put out that blaze on the Idaho-Montana border. The fire was caused by lightning and according to fire managers made runs with trees torching in heavy timber yesterday. Some crowning and spotting was also seen. A challenge for firefighters so far is a lack of water near the fire, requiring long flight times from the Clark Canyon Reservoir and elsewhere. That fire is blanketing a wide area with smoke and while the wind is expected to die down today, strong winds are expected again on Sunday. That fire is 0% contained. Montanans already have a general election ballot crowded with high profile races for many statewide offices. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison tells us voters have another big issue to decide legalizing marijuana. Late Thursday, it became official. Two initiatives that would legalize recreational marijuana in Montana will be on the November 3rd ballot for voters to decide. Initiative 190, if passed, would legalize the possession and use of limited amounts of marijuana for those 21 and older. It also has a companion major, Constitutional Initiative 118, which is needed to allow the 21-year-old age restriction in law. Without it, adults 18 to 20 could not be banned from possessing marijuana. The group behind the effort, New Approach Montana, collected more than 130,000 signatures of registered Montana voters to qualify both measures for the general election ballot. I-190 also would levy a 20% tax on the sale of non-medical marijuana in Montana, and supporters of the measure say that will generate $48 million a year by 2025. Campaign spokesman Pepper Peterson says New Approach's research shows that a majority of Montanans support legalization of marijuana. And in less than two months, Montana voters will start deciding whether that's true or not. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Montana has had medical marijuana legalized in the state since 2005. Two petitions are now in front of the Montana Fish and Wildlife Commission about recreation and management on the Madison River. MTN's Gabby Krevett reports. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, um, the motion carries. On Thursday afternoon, the Fish and Wildlife Commission voted four to one in favor of moving both presented petitions forward. And I'd like to move the commission to adopt both petitions to initiate rulemaking directing the FWP staff to draft a rule that goes out for public comment, including uh, the elements of both petitions. The Fly Fishing Outfitters Association of Montana presented one petition, while the George Grant chapter of Trout Unlimited, along with the Anaconda Sportsmen's Association, presented another. Commissioners noted the two had a number of rulemaking requests in common, like capping the number of trips for commercial use and establishing a no-cost, no-limit Madison River stamp for recreational users. Commissioners and some in the public pointed to what they called the elephant in the room, the increasing number of recreational users over the years and the lack of plans for managing them. Until we're ready to talk about overall use, um, it seems somewhat um, disingenuous to just simply point the finger at the thing that drives the economy of Venice, West Yellowstone, and Virginia City. Some in the public expressed their concerns with different requests in the petitions, but many expressed their support for moving the process along forward. It is a good starting point to get this out to the public and have a robust, healthy um, public discussion about this issue, which has been going on for a long time. In Madison County, Gabby Crevett, MTN News. 
Just ahead of 634 now, a lack of a law in Montana could be putting women at risk of developing breast cancer. MTN's investigative reporter Andrea Lutz has the story. Roughly one in two women have dense breast tissue. But here's what's alarming. Research is finding mammograms alone might not be effective in detecting tumors in women with dense breasts. Here's my MTN investigation I've been working on since before the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Finding a tumor in a mammogram where breast tissue is dense is many times compared to finding a snowball in a snowstorm. Um, it wasn't really for Michelle Bartholomew. So I probably had that cancer for a, a year, you know, like longer than you think. Cancer lurked in her body even after her so mammogram told her she was so healthy. Another year. Every year you go in for the mammogram, you expect that it's going to come back and, and be negative. And hers did in September of 2016. I, I would describe it as feeling like the top of your knuckle. That's kind of what it felt like. Small, kind of hard. By December, that's how she described feeling a lump. Turns out that tumor never showed up. Like Michelle, about 40% of women have high dense breast tissue, something medical experts classify in four levels. The levels are typically seen in your mammogram report using letters A, B, C, or D. But in Montana, no other explanation is required beyond that. And Montana is lagging behind on this, with no breast density notification law or pending legislation. This while 38 other states form some sort of density requirement notification system, some even providing women with insurance coverage for next steps. You have a lot of lymph nodes. Michelle, who lives in Missoula, ended up going out of state to Washington for a second opinion. I think that in order to make any kind of medical decision, I like having as much information as possible. In Washington, every patient with extremely dense breasts receive a written notification disclosed in a letter. Together you can decide what screening options are right for you. But even when a woman is armed with this information, the big question is, what do they do with it? We didn't know what the supplemental screening was to do at that time. So we were telling people you need to do something more, but we weren't really sure what to do. Dr. Michael Stewart is a diagnostic radiologist working at both hospitals in Missoula. He admits cancer was being missed by mammograms alone. That's why Providence Health purchased an automated breast ultrasound. And we're finding several cancers that have been hidden. It's a supplemental 3D screening that has the potential to find 35% more cancers that wouldn't be found with a mammogram alone. I don't think a lot of people are well versed in it at this point. They know that it really is a big issue. So within the last couple of years, it's really changing. As radiologists, we understand that this is really important. We don't like it when we look at a mammogram and something is hidden. But it's only an option for women who qualify with their insurance. So another option for women seeking peace of mind is an abbreviated MRI. The only one that's available in Montana is at Big Sky Diagnostic Imaging and Billings for an out-of-pocket expense of $500. When insurance potentially has you blocked out, this could be a lifesaver. MTN Investigates checked in with all of Montana's largest hospitals to see who had an independent policy on breast density notification in addition to Providence Health. At St. Peter's Health, they currently do not assign a value for individual breast density, but currently are evaluating how we can start. Those with the Billings Clinic say they formed a notification reporting policy sometime this last spring, while St. Vincent Healthcare officials say they've been informing patients of breast tissue density for roughly six to seven years. But beyond that, our additional requests for comment went unanswered. The Komen Foundation says dense breasts are more common in young women and That's thin women. Much, right? I mean, but as most know, Cancer knows no boundaries. So you just kind of have to, to live your best day. Michelle now takes her breast cancer diagnosis in strides as a dragon boat racing teammate with other survivors. Sometimes that's the best healing is helping other people. The group allows for a support system, although this year's season hasn't quite started yet. Started. Still, going forward, she questions if a mammogram will be enough. A lot of answers to my questions are we don't know. If I'm in my fear-based anxiety state, then it makes me want to do everything. Um, but when you come back to reality, it's, 
you know, you can't live your life in fear. The Mammography Reporting Act was introduced into Congress back in 2017, but it is at a standstill. And some states say they're waiting for that federal legislation to take hold. But meanwhile, the American Cancer Society says some 42,000 women die from breast cancer every single year. For MTN Investigates, I'm Andrea Lutz. Well, we've all heard it, just take a deep breath, but it turns out there's some science behind that advice. Just how that works is coming up at first. Here's a look ahead to what's on CBS This Morning at 7. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, the president's son-in-law and senior advisor, Jared Kushner, joins us. We'll discuss his role in the historic deal between Israel and the United Arab Emirates and the federal government's response to the coronavirus. Also, with Kamala Harris officially accepting the nomination for vice president at next week's Democratic National Convention, we'll look at how women are affecting the 2020 election. And tracking the great whites will show you how scientists are protecting them from dying when they are just baby sharks. All that coming up when we see you at 7.